That's what you are. The year is 1950. Europe is in the early stages of recovery from the war. General Dwight Eisenhower is not yet even a candidate for the presidency he'll capture in 1952. In France, Charles de Gaulle is between terms as head of government. The Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe is beginning to take hold. The Berlin airlift has only recently ended. And scuba diving is in its infancy. Professionals, particularly military organizations, are coming to grips with the challenges of the underwater world. At the same time, there are a very small number of amateurs drawn to what later will be known as sport diving. One of those amateurs is a Swiss watch executive named Jean-Jacques Fichter. Together with his aunt, Betty, the first woman to head a Swiss watch company, he co-leads the watch house of Blancpain, then entering its third century with workshops located in the remote village of Villeray, nestled in the Swiss Jura Mountains. Fichter is an early adopter of this new sport of scuba diving. My tante a joué un rôle uh, important parce que my aunt played an important role because she had a summer house in Cannes sur Mer on the French Riviera. That's where I had the chance to contact the scuba diving clubs that existed on the coast. In Nice, in Cannes, in Antibes, Juan les Pins, in Saint Tropez, whenever I was there, I could join and take part in serious scuba diving training. You have to remember that at the beginning, there were a few scuba diving clubs, enthusiasts, so to speak, but it was not yet a popular sport. It was a different world. His fascination with the sea springs from his upbringing in Egypt and his study of history for which he has earned a PhD. His hope is to master this new sport and make discoveries of antiquities lost underwater. During a dive off the coast of France, there's a crisis. Fichter has lost track of time and run out of air. Risking possible fatal injury he is forced to make an emergency sprint to the surface without a decompression stop. To make a long story short, la remontée. The climb should have been slow, but I climbed much faster without taking the necessary precautions. So I ran the risk of having an attack of the bends, of having to stop my climb and not being able to come out of it. Fichter has an epiphany. He realizes that in addition to masks, fins, and air tanks, divers need a timing device to keep track of their time underwater. This underwater world demands a diving watch. But what should this diving watch consist of, and how should it be constructed? certainly not like the men's small dress watches popular in the 40s and 50s. Half a millennium of watchmaking had given birth to well-known and established methods and designs. Indeed, there were norms followed throughout Switzerland, born from the traditions of crafting pocket watches and use of tools that guided watchmakers in the construction of a dizzying variety of watch types and the manner in which to construct them. There was no such script for a diving watch. If ever there was a white sheet of paper design, this would be it. Fichter not only had to invent the answers to questions, he had to begin by discovering what the questions would be. Water resistance was key. La plongée sous-marine, uh, Scuba diving is an extraordinary sport, 
but you have to have the right equipment. Those who owned a waterproof watch usually removed it as a precaution before going into the water. Because in the 50s, water resistance was not yet guaranteed. It was the adoption of the O-ring seal that changed perceptions of the watch's water resistance. Blancpain's service center is located in the Swiss village of Le Brassus, which is located in the Vallée du Joux, the legendary cradle of watchmaking. Fichter's 1950s invention of a new method to protect the O-ring seal is explained by the master watchmaker who heads Blancpain's vintage department. What was very special on the Blancpain 50 Fatum is a case bag gasket. On a normal watch, the gasket will be twisted when you screw the case back. On the Blancpain 50 Fatum, the gasket is sitting right on the groove. Then you can cover it with a back protector. And when you will tie the case back, that protector will not move at all. That way, the gasket is pressed, but is not twisting on itself. And it's the best way to guarantee the watch will be waterproof in the long term. Fichter's reimagining of how to adapt a watch to the underwater world led to another key innovation. The second serious problem was the crown. The crown was waterproof to a certain extent, but if you left it in position to set the time, the watch would leak. On normal watches, the gasket was on the inside of the crown. So when you use a function, the water can get inside of the watch. But on the 50 Fatum, the casket is located on the tube. That way, when you use your watch, whatever the position of the crown, the water cannot get inside of the watch. Fichter's invention of the O-ring seal and crown seal would each be granted patent protection. Fichter had another inspiration, drawn from his own experience. He recognized that it would be easy for a diver to forget when a dive had started. This led him to focus upon the bezel. The importance of time becomes critical when the length of the dive increases. You have to account for the time when you increase the depth. As soon as I did my first tests in 1952, at the very beginning, I told myself that the rotating bezel had to let you calculate the time underwater. And that's what we did. The bezel is a key element of the 50 Fatum. When you go diving, it's more than important to know how much time you are spending underwater. At this time, chronographs could not be waterproof, so you could not use them. On a 50 Fatum, you have this clever bezel, which you can use. You just have to align the minute hand with the index of the bezel, and straight away you can see with your minute hands, by reading on the bezel, how much time you've been spending underwater. And because you want to be sure the bezel itself is not moving when you're diving, you have a very clever system to make sure you have to press the bezel to make it rotating. To manufacture the first watch cases for his watch, incorporating his inventions, Fichter was fortunate living in Villeray. Villeray was the birthplace of Blancpain, for in 1735, its founder, Jehan Jacques Blancpain, was recognized on the official village rolls as a watchmaker. This first workshop was in fact a farmhouse. Cows below on the ground floor, his watchmaking upstairs. Jehan Jacques' descendants constructed additional workshops scattered throughout the village of Villeray. In one of those buildings, constructed in 1856, Betty Fichter occupied the first floor, 
and her nephew, Jean-Jacques, the ground floor. Fichter's neighbor was a watch case maker. Lorsque j'ai, j'ai vraiment pris un poste dans l'horlogerie avec dans, chez ma tante, When I got a position at Blancpain with my aunt, I took advantage of the fact that we were right next door to the Polyfrère case manufactory in Villeray, and where Pauli, one of the directors, was interested not in scuba diving, but in making improvements. Fichter was not alone in thinking about a watch for divers. The French Navy was on the hunt for such a watch. The team commissioned to the task was led by Captain Robert Bob Maloubier and Lieutenant Claude Riffaut. Maloubier was a war hero attached to Churchill's famed Special Operations Executive, the SOE. He explains his quest for a watch to outfit his newly formed combat diving corps. Well, écoutez, la première chose, c'est s'adresser à une maison à de montre française. The first thing was to talk to one of the French watchmaking companies the biggest one at the time. I talked to a young, dynamic executive in a very nice office in the center of Paris. He gave me small watches that were roughly the size of a fingernail with very thick glass and nice small white bracelets. He gave us roughly 30 of them and they immediately took on water. Then we took another 30 and they immediately took on water. To such an extent that one of my non-commissioned officers called me and said, Captain, Captain, My watch isn't waterproof. I found a baby grouper in it. So we got a ruling pen, some compasses, some graph paper, and we tried to design our dream watch, the ideal watch for diving, which featured everything we wanted. Meaning, of course, luminous letters, not too many numbers, a rotating bezel, etc., etc. We drew up everything we had in mind. We proposed it to the watch company, which laughed in our face. Diving watches have no future. Through the intermediary of Spiro Technique, now Aqualung, we got in touch with Blancpain, the oldest Swiss watch brand. They, on the other hand, agreed to make our watch, and so they made it for us. It was the 50 Fathoms, the original one, which dates back to 1953. It was in service for a long time, because later on, it was selected by the SEALs, meaning the American combat divers. Also, I think, by the Pakistanis, the Spanish, etc., 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 and by the Germans. Le combat schwimmel. Maloubier was decorated by Queen Elizabeth with the Order of the British Empire Medal in 2014, one year before his death at the age of 91. Maloubier's ideas corresponded with Fichter's designs. Fichter had watches to supply to the French with one modification, adding protection against magnetism. As for the 50 fathoms, at the time we had specifications from the French military that we also had to take into account. In particular, they were very sensitive to the question of magnetism. And that's why they also came up with this requirement, which we added to the list. It was to guarantee that the watches were protected against magnetism. And we modified it to satisfy the requirement. But aside from that, there were no changes. With that addition of a soft iron anti-magnetic inner case, the French Combat Diving Corps had its watch. So did Fichter's diving instructor. This is the timepiece, the original 50 fathoms, the one chosen by the French Combat Diving Corps but also by Jacques-Yves Cousteau for his team of divers in their pioneering undersea adventure celebrated in the Academy Award-winning film The Silent World. Fichter needed a name for this new Blancpain. 
he turned to Shakespeare's Tempest for his inspiration. We talked about it amongst ourselves. And the idea came up to not use a standard watchmaking name. And that's when we went with Shakespeare. We found this musical alliteration, this play on words. It started with Full fathom five, thy father lies. You can hear the musicality of this turn of phrase, full fathom five. Full fathom five. We couldn't use full fathom, but fifty fathom preserved the alliteration. Feaster's keen insights into the needs of a diver endure today. A rotating bezel protected against inadvertent rotation to time the dive. Effective seals for the case back and crown. Perfect legibility with large size and white markers and hands on a black background. Luminous markings and hands for use in darkness. Automatic winding to save wear and tear on the crown seal. Shielding from magnetism. Collectors now recognize this early model from its markings Rotomatic Inca Block and Arabic numerals at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. The design, indeed the very DNA of this 1953 example, was so spot on, so penetrating in its insights, that not only has it endured for well over half a century, but it has defined the diving watch genre for the watch world ever since. Three years after the 50 Fathoms debuted on the market, Fichter broadened his vision. The 50 Fathoms was a large watch, conceived for maximum utility while underwater. But what about women divers for whom the regular 50 Fathoms was too large? What about amateurs who wanted a timepiece that could be worn as an everyday watch and also used for diving? The answer was a smaller diameter diving watch, which he named the Bathyscaphe. He had in mind the diving vessel of a fellow Swiss, Auguste Picard. La montre 50 fathom était une montre d'un diamètre the 50 Fathoms was a watch with a diameter that was slightly too large for most women. Now, women wear very large watches. This wasn't the case back then. Fortunately, we sold small watches. But for the diving watch, we had to find a halfway point. And so we picked a smaller diameter. It almost became a normal-sized watch but we were still able to keep the crown and the rotating bezel system. As a daily wear watch, in addition to all of its diving robustness and features such as the bezel for timing, the Bathyscaphe introduced a new element. We thought that the date could potentially be an interesting element and one that wasn't too complicated to incorporate. So we changed the manufacturing process to include this aperture in the dial. The French Navy was the first military to adopt the 50 fathoms. Others soon followed, such as the Germans. They wanted the screwed crown. This had advantages and disadvantages, in that the screwed crown is sturdy if you don't open it, but if you leave it opened, it's done for. The Germans believed the five-minute divisions didn't offer a huge advantage. That divers could calculate the length of time they had spent underwater using a triangular mark on the bezel without having engraved numbers. Though not the first of the world's militaries to depend upon the 50 fathoms for their divers, the story of the U.S. Navy's selection of Blancpain is a key chapter in the history of this icon. President Kennedy is seen here with the elite Navy SEAL divers wearing 50 fathoms watches during the early 1960s, 
But the story begins years before with Blancpain's American distributor, Alan V. Torneck. On a trip to Switzerland to meet with Fichter, Torneck was shown an example of the Blancpain 50 fathoms. As his son Larry was a diver, Torneck brought the watch back to the U.S. as a gift for Larry. As he flew back across the Atlantic, an idea was hatched. Why not become a supplier to the Navy? What Torneck discovered was that a procurement qualification process had already begun. Plainly drafted after seeing the 50 fathoms in use by other nations' navies, a 1955 draft specification called for features which Fichter had pioneered. Superior water resistance, light-colored hands against a dark background, and a rotating bezel for timing dives. And one more thing a moisture indicator on the dial. Since these were diving instruments issued for each dive, along with mask, fins, and other equipment, a diver needed to verify that the watch had not been misused by another diver at an earlier time. If he saw that the piece that was given to him showed it wasn't right, he would turn it down and wouldn't run the risk of diving with a compromised piece. Watches from other Swiss companies and from prospective American suppliers were tested between 1957 and 1959. One testing site was the Frankfurt Arsenal, located in Philadelphia. This sprawling facility dated to 1816 and the administration of President James Madison only one watch passed all the tests, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. The clarity of Fichter's vision in his design was confirmed by the American test divers. Quote, the outer ring of the watches soon came to be regarded as an indispensable feature. The ease of setting the ring and of reading the numbers were very clearly superior in the Blancpain watch as compared to other types that were in use at the scene. After what the Navy described as hard use, with shocks, came this final summary of the tests of the Blancpain. In summary, experience with 12 Blancpain underwater watches during Operation Hardtack yielded virtually complete satisfaction. No worthwhile suggestions for improvement of this watch can be offered. This version of the 50 Fathoms, which the American Navy selected, notable with its moisture indicator on the dial, was named by Blancpain the mill spec. Winning the competition to become the U.S. Navy's dive watch still left the maze of government regulations. One such regulation required the purchase of U.S.-made rubies for the movement. America had begun producing a small number of watchmaking rubies for the Army. The quality of those rubies was poor compared to the rubies that already existed and had been perfected for a hundred years in Switzerland. He bought the rubies in America as required by the specification, but actually used the rubies from Switzerland, which allowed us to preserve Swiss chronometry and the watchmaking rubies' production qualities. So I don't know where they ended up. The original mill spec was followed by a second version, appropriately enough named the mill spec 2. The mill spec 2 incorporated a few changes from the first version. A case made of German silver, the movement with beryllium plates to reduce the magnetic signature of the watch, and a matte finish on the case to reduce the risk of reflections when a diver reached the surface. Blancpain's ties to military around the world were important, but so too were amateur divers. Throughout the three decades that Fichter led Blancpain following the debut of the first model, 
witness the debut of more than a dozen different variants of the 50 and the Bathyscaf. Throughout its history, a number of models have achieved special notoriety. One is the iconic No Radiations version. The symbol on the dial guaranteed the owner that no radioactive compounds had been used for the luminous markings that would glow in darkness. At some point, a panic spread about the radium. All of a sudden, in America, people got worked up because some said, oh, I caught the radiations. I was irradiated by my watch. Noteworthy as well are the versions made by Blancpain but sold under different names. One example is the Aqualung, which was created for the Aqualung dive shops in France, where the watch was sold alongside the full range of diving equipment. In the U.S., many were sold by Alan Torneck under the name Torneck Rayville. Rayville, a name used by Blancpain for a short period of time, was selected to call to mind Villaret, Blancpain's native village. The Fichter chapter in the saga of the 50 Fathoms came to an end in the early 1980s when Fichter stepped down, coincident with the sale of Blancpain to the renowned Swiss watch movement company Frédéric Piguet. That sale was to place the evolution of the 50 Fathoms on hold, as Blancpain shifted its focus to dress and complicated watches. The 50s slumber was to last two decades. No one could have foretold young people's interest in the diving watch. And as for me, I am very happy to have played a part in this prelude. Be a bride.